hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem with you. This poem is from NCERT textbook class 12. The name of the book is Flamingo and the name of the poem is an elementary school classroom in a slum. Now the very title tells you that this poem is going to be about elementary school. So that means it is about education, classroom situation and also it says slum. So that means the area is also defined for us to understand where the school is located and how the education is over there. So before we take up the poem, I would like to discuss a few questions with you so that we have a better understanding about education. How do we look at education? Let us look at these questions first of all. The first question is how do we ensure that learning shifts from rote methods? I know learning should be meaning making and not related to rote methods. You are in class 12. Do you think by rote memorizing everything you can learn things? That is just not possible. So how do we make things meaning making for us, around us? If we connect learning to the world around us, it will automatically become fun, it will automatically become meaning making and then we will move away from rote methods. Now, next question is how can we connect learning, knowledge to life outside the school? Yes, because whatever we learn in the school is applicable to our world around us. So therefore, our knowledge should be connected to the world outside to make it practical. Learning is not theory only. How can we make learning an enriching experience? We make learning an enriching experience if we allow the learners experiences to come into the classroom. Otherwise, it will remain a dull and a boring classroom and teacher centered classroom. Let us look at the next question. How can we make assessment more flexible and integrated with classroom life? Our assessment should be formative. It should be on the spot, on the site and it should be integrated with the classroom life. Then only there and then we will assess ourselves and we will improve ourselves. So these are some of the things we keep in mind while we talk about education. Now let us look at this slide. We are talking about diversity. In a classroom there has to be diversity, isn't it? India is a diverse country, we know that. But I think world over you will find that there is diversity in the classrooms. And how do we provide education keeping diversity in view? What are the types of diversities do we find in the classroom? There are rural and urban settings. Learning styles of children may vary. There are some children who are very good at learning things visually. If they look at a picture or a scenery or a graph, they are able to understand it better. But then there are students who read it and learn it better. So there are learning styles. We all learn in a different, in different manner. Then our contexts vary, our backgrounds vary, our cultures vary. Environment also is different. Then of course, our languages are also different. So we have to celebrate diversity. Therefore, when I say that we need to bring in examples from different contexts, that is what it is talking about. Different examples from different contexts, different environments are going to make any classroom an enriching experience. But before I take up the poem, let us know about the poet. The name of the poet is Stephen Spender. 
He was born in 1909 and he was there till 1995. He was an English poet, novelist and essayist. His work focused on themes of social justice and class struggle. And you will find that he is talking about social justice and class struggle in this poem as well. By giving the example of one school elementary school classroom. He was also appointed Poet Laureate Consultant in Poetry to the United States Library of Congress in 1965. This poem, the poem that we are going to read now was published in 1964. Stephen Spender describes social inequalities around him. He describes the condition of the students of an elementary school that is situated in a slum area. The poet wants to draw everyone's attention towards these children so that their lives can be improved. That is what the idea of the poem is. You must be knowing that poems are meant to be read aloud with proper stress, intonation and pauses. I will now read the poem for you. This poem is a very lengthy one. It has four stanzas. I will read one stanza at a time and we will have a bit of a discussion on it. So let us look at the poem. You can open your books also to read an elementary school classroom in a slum. Far, far from gusty waves these children's faces like rootless weeds, the hair torn round their pallor, the tall girl with a weighed down head, the paper seeming boy with rat's eyes, the stunted unlucky air of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease. His lesson from his desk at back of the dim class, one unnoted, sweet and young, his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this. Let us look at the first stanza once again. And try to get the theme, the idea. Far, far from gusty waves, these children's faces. So this shows that you know far, far. This gusty is bright. These children's faces are far, far away from brightness. Their life is like rootless weeds. You know what a weed is? Weed is an unwanted plant that grows on its own. These Children are rootless weeds. There is a girl in the class, tall, tall girl, weighed down head. Maybe she is burdened with some worry or hardships of life. And there is a boy, paper seeming boy. This boy is as thin as a paper. His growth is stunted. His bones are twisted. There is no interest in his lesson. He is sitting at the back of the class, unnoticed, but there is a dream in his eye. There are dreams in every child's eyes. He is looking out of the window, there is a squirrel. The squirrel is playing around a tree and he also wants to be free like a squirrel. So I think from the first stanza, the meaning is clear. You must notice the words that have been used, paper seeming, reciting a father's gnarled disease, rat size, squirrel's game in the tree. The child also wants that kind of freedom, that free expression. In a poem, the use of words is the beauty of the poem. The poet has also used many literary devices. I will give you a few examples of literary devices. 
let us take the example of simile. Children are compared with rootless weed, like rootless weed. Then metaphor, boy is compared with paper as he is thin, paper seeming boy. The boy looks like a paper. Then the use of repetition, use of far to stress on the distance. The first stanza is over. I hope it is clear to you. Let us move on to the second stanza, stanza 2. On sour cream walls, donations, Shakespeare's head, cloudless of dawn, civilized dome, riding all cities, belt, flurry, Tyrolee's valley, open handed map, awarding the world its world and yet for these children, these windows, not this map, their world, where all their futures painted with a fog, a narrow street sealed in with a lead sky, far, far from rivers, capes and stars of words. Let us look at the holistic idea of this stanza. Now, in this stanza, the poet is describing the inside of the classroom, sour cream walls. So, the walls of the classroom are dull, maybe they have not been painted for many, many years now, they are full of dust maybe. Then on these walls, there are pictures, there are chart papers, there are photographs. In your classroom also you have such things like maybe a map or a chart paper or something else which is developed by you or by your teacher, which is relevant to your topic that you are dealing with. But over here, it is not related to their life at all and these are all donations. They, it was, these were not developed by these children or by the teacher. They were given by some other people and they are there on the walls. So, what do we find on the walls? Shakespeare's head, portrait of Shakespeare and then of course, there is a picture of a beautiful Tyrolese valley. This Tyrolese valley is in Austria, full of flowers, full of beautiful trees, flowery and belled and then there is a map of the world. But does this map belong to these children? Can they identify their lives or the place where they are living with this map? The map does not show their slum. Their future is as dark as a fog. It is hazy, it is just not clear. Far, far from rivers, capes and stars of words. So, once again the poet uses repetition of the word far, far. Their lives are far, far away from beautiful rivers, capes. Capes are landmarks which we find in the sea and the stars of words. That brightness is not there in their lives. So, this is the idea that has been discussed in this stanza, the scene of the classroom. Now, let us look at the literary devices that have been used poet has used metaphor, walls are described to be dull as sour cream, sour cream walls. So, walls have been compared to sour cream which is yellowish, which is not bright. The future of the kids is described as limited, narrow street, sealed with a lead sky. They have no clarity about their future. There are more literary devices to this. There is assonance, repetition of the vowel sound. What is assonance? Repetition of the vowel sound. Here the poet has used the words belt, flurry, tyrolese, valley. So, which vowel sound is used here? E. Then we have allusion, reference to well known person 
or plays like Shakespeare's head, probably these children have no idea who Shakespeare is. As we all know, Shakespeare is one of the well known playwrights of this world, in the literary world I would say, but they have no idea. Then Tyrolese Valley, this valley is in Austria, these children have never been there. So, this is illusion for them. Then of course, repetition, the, ver the word far has been repeated to show that good things are, bright things are far from these children. So, I hope these two stanzas are clear to you. Now, I want you to annotate these two stanzas, read them on your own and then annotate them. Annotate means you read and write down the theme summary of these two stanzas. While writing the summary, if you come across words that you are not familiar with, then please refer to your dictionary. While doing annotation, you will find that you are able to understand the poem better with lots and lots of clarity. You can share your annotation with your friend. Why not? When you share, you will have peer assessment. Your friend can give some ideas to improve and you can also give some ideas to your friend. Why don't you have poetry group among your friends? Whatever you are learning, whatever you are writing, share it with your friends, seek their opinion and it will help you improve your task. So, I will take up stanza 3 and stanza 4 in the next session. Thank you.